Hey guys, Jeffrey here. In this video, I'm going to show you why you may be having a very difficult time right now trying to get your partner to talk to you. So you might find here, and a lot of people find that whenever you try to start a conversation, your partner might try to avoid it, try to stonewall it, try to run away from it, any chance she gets. And I want you to stick around to the very end of this video because here I want to show you the very common mistake and the common misunderstanding people have about what it means to communicate with your partners. And I want to show you a different way of communicating that will allow you to create a great deal of safety that will make it easier for your partner to lean into conversations with you and actually want to draw closer towards you over time. And in case you're new to this channel, my name is Jeffrey and I help men in long-term relationships or in marriages with the right skills, with the right mindsets, with the right paradigms to be able to allow you to design a thriving relationship for yourself. So if you want more content that allows you to do this, then be sure to subscribe to this channel and also click that bell button as well to be notified when I post new videos every single week. And before we begin this video, I want to let you know that the free masterclass on the five proven steps to rebuilding your relationship from the ground up is still open. So if you want to join that masterclass or if you want to join our relationship survival program and submit your application for that, then be sure to stick around to the very end of this video for the announcement on how you can join that masterclass. So to begin this video, I want to show you a bit more about what my observations are about how most people communicate. So let's say here that your partner brings up something to you. Maybe this thing that she brings up uh, is a tough truth. It can be any emotional or logical problem that she brings up to you. So just understand that these problems that we're talking about can be instigated by you, something you did, or instigated by something that happens in life, something happens at work, her friends, etc. Or it could be that whenever you try to have a conversation, you find that she's resisting you hard. She could be stonewalling, she could be gaslighting, etc. And for most people, the initial reaction that most people have is that they instantly try to solve it. And usually your attempt to provide an answer here comes in three different forms. The first form is what we call the stoic approach. This is when you're trying to get into that solutions mode, give advice perhaps, so for example, your partner brings up something that happened at work, some issue that she has, and instantly you're saying, okay, well, here's what I usually do. Here's what I would do. Here's uh, the best thing to do. Here's how you should respond, etc." So you hear you're instantly getting into that advice or solution stage. Another thing that a lot of men do is they try to lecture, they try to coach your partner into doing something. So this is especially true when we talk about um, our partners either gaslighting us or stonewalling us. So let's say she shuts down whenever you try to have a conversation. You might coach her by saying, for example, hey, um, you know, this is not how a relationship is supposed to be. We're supposed to be communicating. We're supposed to be talking to each other. Um, we can never solve our problems if we don't talk to each other. So you start to coach your partner as if she doesn't understand the importance of communication here. The third thing people do is really to try to justify and explain. And this usually happens when you are the instigator of something bad, that's something bad, and you made the mistake, and instantly you're trying to justify yourself and trying to explain yourself and say, oh, hold on, this is a misunderstanding, this is actually what I was trying to do. Another approach that people take is what we call the active logic approach, and this approach is really about, again, shifting the blame to your partner, and here maybe you're trying to try to tell your partner, hey, this behavior is not acceptable, you need to change your behavior, if you behave like this, we can't really talk. And the difference here between the stoic approach and the active approach is really that the active approach comes with a lot of anger, comes with a lot of fiery passion, while the stoic approach is more of like you're trying to be that faceless coach or that stoic coach for your partner. The other approach that people take is really the passive approach, the passive logic approach, which is when people say, and I hear people say this a lot, and I think they learn this from a lot of other videos, a lot of other coaches out there, and they say, hey, I can't talk to you when you're like this. Let me know when you're ready to calm down. Let me know when you're ready to have a adult conversation and then they walk away. And I think when you're watching this video and you're struggling in your relationship, you'll see that you might have done a lot of one of these three things or multiple of these three things before. And just to dive deeper into this a little bit too and see this from another angle. In a lot of my videos, we talked about how not only how emotions form, but also how emotions lead to the eventual decisions that People make decisions via emotion. So here up top, we have your partner making the decision to actually bring up the problem itself, bring up the issue that she's been feeling. But we know that the decision to bring up the issue does not just stand in isolation. There are actually underlying reasons behind that. And usually the underlying reason starts with that emotion again. Emotions lead to decisions. So here we call this the conditioned emotions. Now, we also know that the conditioned emotions are usually caused by the conditioned interpretations. And we also know 
that the conditioned interpretations are caused by the conditioned assumptions, the conditioned paradigms that we've had, the way we see the world as well. And if you want more details on what this means, if you're feeling lost right now, I want you to watch this video right here above my head and that will explain to you the mechanics of how emotions form in our brains, in our psyche, in our human bodies as well. And I think this will become a lot more clear to you once you watch that video. I also paste this video at the end of this video in the end uh, screen and also in the description box below this video as well. But if we understand this flow, what we should also understand here is that the logical approach really only focuses on this very surface level here. And they focus on this with either the stoic approach, the passive approach, or the active approach. And they kind of ignore all the stuff at the bottom here. They ignore the underlying emotions behind it. So if we understand this, we can start to understand why our partner struggles to really listen to us, to want to have a conversation with us. Because number one, whatever should present a problem, if we respond with one of the three ways that we talked about here, then we're essentially punishing her for expressing herself. And this is especially true when you respond in that passive form, a uh, passive logic form or the active logic form. Because here, your partner is obviously upset. She's obviously emotional. She's obviously angry about this thing. And when you're angry, when you're emotional, when you're upset, whatever you express will be expressed in an angry, upset, emotional way. And this is not just your partner doing this. You will do the same as well. And you'd probably do the same many more times than you realize as well. And so when your partner expresses her true feelings in the way that she actually feels, and you punish her for it by saying, oh, that behavior is not acceptable, you cannot talk like this, then basically what you're saying is, Whenever you express something, the true feelings, the raw feelings that you have, I'm gonna punish you for it, that's not okay. And so she learns over time here that it's just easier to keep things to herself and not express it to you. Which by the way, is the reason why her emotions are very intense. So a lot of you men watching this might be thinking, for example, well, there has to be a line, there has to be a point where I can say to my partner, like that behavior is unacceptable when she goes over the line. Well, why do you think she feels that she needs to go over the line because she's probably been bottling up all those emotions for a very long time and it finally comes out in this very intense way. And when you respond in this way, when you respond to her and by punishing her expressions, what you're doing is you're causing that, those emotions to be bottled up even more and even more. And this is gonna make the situation even worse in the long term. The second thing that might happen also is that your partner might feel controlled or trapped into accepting your ideas. And I'm sure a lot of you men right now watching this will have heard your partner say, for example, that the reason why she wants space, the reason why she wants to separate, the reason why she wants divorce is that for the first time in her life, she wants to feel like she's a master of her own decisions. She wants to make her own decisions. She wants to find herself. She wants to discover herself. She wants to explore life, etc. And it's usually because you've been subconsciously and in inadvertently making decisions for her. And so when you focus too much on that logical level and the surface level, you're probably most likely gonna fail to understand the actual problems that she's having. And when you misunderstand the problems that she's actually having, you're going to often give the wrong advice, the, the irrelevant advice. But the problem is that when you only explore that surface side, you are gonna think you're right. You are gonna think that your solutions, your suggestions are right. And so when she doesn't take your suggestions, you get subconsciously upset. And I think a lot of men do this and a lot of women complain about this. Hey, I express a problem to you and you give me advice. The advice for the woman is not really relevant. And so she just kind of runs with things and makes another decision, perhaps decision that goes against your suggestions. And when you discover that decision that goes against your, your suggestion, you get pretty upset. That's a common problem in a lot of relationships. And so when this happens enough, your partner is gonna to start to regret bringing things up at all. And so again, you can see here, both these consequences destroy a lot of safety in your partner. It makes it really difficult for your partner to want to express things to you, to want to talk to you. And now the conditioning she has is that whenever there's a conversation with you, especially about the difficult things in life, it usually ends in a bad way. Now, if we start to explore a more emotional conversation here, the priority becomes the process of understanding your partner. And priority number two is not only understanding your partner, but also taking the time to make sure that your partner feels understood as well. The priority here is not just about giving that resolution or giving that solution, but about getting on the same level of understanding first of each other's point of views. And if you do this, this will free up the pipes of communication here and you are going to allow this environment where you can solve your problems together. So again, to visually see this, again, you have the problems that she bring up up top, we're not really interested in this stage. What we're really interested in are really the, uh, the items in orange here. We want to understand the conditioned emotions that she might have when that problem happens. 
And when we look at the condition emotions, we also want to look at the condition interpretations. We also want to look at and label those condition assumptions, paradigms, and so on. So the emotional approach here wants to dig deeper into that part, the lower parts, the underlying emotions behind it. And only that, not only does it seek to understand it, it takes time to confirm it. And I'll show you some examples of what this means a bit later. So to give you a very quick example here, you know, this actually happened last night during dinner. For those of you who are curious, we're actually not married yet. And the reason why we're not married is that we've been together for close to seven years now. And we want to save our marriage uh, for the time when we're actually ready, ready to enjoy our wedding ceremony, ready to enjoy our marriage, ready to have kids and so on. And right now our careers are just taking up too much of our time to where we don't really want to take some time to plan our wedding yet. And last night, my partner brought up the problem here that, you know, we were having dinner with a, a few of our friends a couple of days ago, a couple of nights ago. And our friends asked like, so when are you two guys getting married? And when my friends asked that, I kind of hesitated for a long time. I went, hmm. And she saw my reaction and she was secretly very upset about it. And so during dinner yesterday, she brought up that, hey, when our friends asked you, when are we going to get married? You got pretty upset there and you seem pretty upset. You seem like you hesitated. You seem like you were unsure and so on. And I can see from her face when she's expressing this, she's actually quite upset. Now, if, we were, if I were to take that logical approach, I, what I would do right now is start to justify myself, explain myself. If I were to explain myself then, the odds of her wanting to listen to me would be very low. And in case you're wondering, the reason why I hesitated here was because, you know, usually when people find out what I do, which is saving people in their marriages and relationships, the first question they ask is, why aren't you married yet? How can you do this when you're not even married? So I know that whenever people ask us about marriage, the answer is never that simple for me. So the reason why I hesitated was, it's just, I was thinking up how to really answer this. But I knew that saying that and expressing that to her, explaining myself and justifying myself wasn't really the main point, that I needed to dig down deep first. So that's what I did. I explored those underlying emotions first. So first I asked myself and I thought to myself, what were the feelings that she was feeling? So she could be feeling some confusion here perhaps. I could see why she was confused. Uh, she might feel betrayed. She might feel frustrated. She might feel annoyed at this. Right, now I dig deeper into, okay, let's dig deeper behind this feeling of betrayal, this feeling of confusion. She may be asking herself here, am I delusional? Have I been strung along by this guy I've been with for the last seven years? You know, maybe she was thinking, what's wrong with him? And we can even go down deep into the condition assumptions, the condition paradigms. Maybe she has seen a lot of her family's relationships kind of break down because the woman has been strung along by this guy who's manipulative, who's tricky for, for decades on end. And she might be afraid that, am I getting strung along as well? Am I falling into the same trap as well? And a lot of you seeing this might also think that this is a bad thing. But to me, this is a wonderful thing because these problems I know do and will come up. And when they do come up, what I'm really focused on is, does she have the safety to actually bring it up? And now that she has brought it up and I've done this analysis in my head of going deeper into the underlying emotions, I can start to paraphrase this to her a lot better. So in that conversation, instead of trying to justify myself, I dug deeper into trying to understand whether my understanding of her was correct. So I said, for example, okay, so yeah, uh, sorry about that. I, I, I could totally see how you could interpret that. You could be confused by that. Maybe you could feel betrayed by that. Maybe you felt like, what the heck is this guy doing? Um, you know, I, I do realize sometimes that the relationships that may be around us that you have seen in your childhood and stuff may not be the best. And so if you see me hesitating when asked about marriage, I could totally see how you could get scared that maybe you're getting strung along. Um, maybe you feel something different here. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Tell me more about that. How, how do you actually feel here? And these kinds of conversations are powerful because this is the essence of persuading safety. And again, I've addressed this in a lot of my videos as well. And that classic example that I often give is the doctor. Again, imagine you're going to a doctor and you see two doctors for two opinions. And the one doctor that you saw was really able to paraphrase you to really describe your situation, your sensations, your feelings, your life in a much deeper way than the other doctor. Instantly, you'll build a lot more safety and trust for that doctor. Being able to make someone feel understood is the essence of persuasion. And in this case, you're trying to persuade safety and trust. And number two is that you'll often find here that the thing is rarely about the thing. What I mean by this is the initial thought you have about why your partner feels bad or why your partner resists you, etc. 
could actually be the wrong reasons. And once you dig deeper into something, you realize that the reasons are completely different than the ones you've thought. And not only this, this subconsciously also empowers and enables your partner to feel more powerful, to feel more capable. Because here you're subconsciously telling your partner here that, hey, your expressions matter and your expressions are important. And I may not understand your expressions yet, but I'm gonna dig deeper to make sure that I understand because your expressions are worth understanding. So when you do this, it removes the need for your partner to preserve and to resist you. And over time, when you do this consistently, when you are able to talk to your partner on that deeper emotional level and communicate on that deeper emotional level, you realize that safety gets created over time. And when safety gets created over time, this makes conversations easier for the future as well. And this is again how all my clients are able to save their relationship despite being in very, very difficult situations. Now, before I end this video, I want to address some common misconceptions that people have about this approach, about this emotional approach. One is that a lot of people think that this is actually making you weaker in some way, making you feel like a doormat. But actually, this actually empowers you even more because when you are able to communicate with someone on an emotional level first, what happens is you're priming them and you're setting the stage for them to want to be more open to what you have to say next. And number two is that the way you paraphrase matters. So earlier in the example, I made a few hypotheses about what my partner was feeling and thinking. Now there's a technique, there's a framework to this paraphrase and the way you paraphrase really matters. And the third thing to note also is that you also don't want this to just be you peppering your partner with a bunch of questions. And a lot of people think, for example, that discovering the emotional side is about just peppering your partner with questions like, tell me how you feel, tell me how you feel. This can get annoying very quickly. So if you want more clarity on the finding this balance between how to paraphrase well, but also not asking too many open-ended questions, I want you to watch this video above my hand. And that video will show you one of the many frameworks that we use in a program to allow you to find this balance and execute this stuff with more finesse. And you have to understand this finesse approach, this balance approach, if you wanna do this well. The last thing to note also is that this can be a very conditioned response from your side. So a lot of you thinking about this may be thinking, ooh, this sounds like a lot of work. This sounds like a lot of thinking involved. Well, yes, just like how when you ride a bike for the first time, there's a lot of thinking behind riding a bike. Or when you drive a car for the first time, there's a lot of thinking when it comes to driving that car. But eventually, if you keep practicing this stuff, driving or riding a bike becomes more of a conditioned thing that you do, that you don't no longer need to think about. And for a lot of our clients, they've really learned how to condition these responses into their minds, into their approach, so that they can do this for every single conversation that they have, and they can continuously create safety over time. Now, if you want to see just how powerful this approach is, the approach of being able to converse on that emotional level is, I want you to watch um, the client reviews and the client stories that I have, and you can check them out by going down below this video, to the description below this video, and in there, I included a link for you to a playlist containing all the client stories that we have. And you can also find this link in the comment section below as well. And when you watch these client stories, all of you will hear these people talking about the importance of communicating on a deeper emotional level. And once they are able to communicate on a deeper emotional level, that's when their relationship begins to really, really change and really quickly as well. So if you want to learn more about this approach and learn the five-step process for how all my clients have gone success, then I want you to join me in my masterclass by clicking the link above my head or also clicking the link down below this video. And at the end of the masterclass, if you want to submit your application for the Relationships Revival Program, you can also do so at the end of that masterclass. And if you're looking for a guide that can help you uh, guide conversations better and give you a glimpse into how you can um, start conversating on this deeper emotional level. You can also download the guide I have for you above my head or also down below this video. And finally, if you want to join a community where you can ask your questions and have a member of my team address your questions, then you can also join me and my team in uh, the Facebook group below this video. And in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, if you found this to be eye-opening, uh, give it a like. It really helps the channel out and also subscribe to this channel for more content like this one. Now, in the meantime, I'll leave you with these two other videos here, the two videos that we mentioned in this ex current video. Uh, with more skills and knowledge for you to design a thriving relationship for yourself. So in the meantime, I'll see you in the next video.